Okay. Thank you. All right. So in three, two. Good afternoon. This is Kathleen Causey, Chair of the Legislative and Government Relations Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. And I call to order uh, the meeting for Thursday, March 3rd. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to appreciate um, my former board colleague, our former board colleague, Ms. Cheryl Pasteur. Um, she has resigned from the board to pursue other um, advocacy um, activities. And um, as she was the former chair, uh, the board chair, Ms. Hen, appointed me to take her place. Um, we greatly appreciate all the work of Ms. Pasteur that she has done on the Board of Education um, and especially regarding legislative issues. Um, so I will do my best. I will not fill her shoes, but I will do my best to support the work of the committee um, and the school system uh, in the best interest of our students. So with that said, uh, the first item is legislative updates. Um, the committee last met on February 3rd and the minutes and the video uh, minutes of that are on board docs. Um, and then for today, we will continue with um, updating on the legislative session. And for that, I call on Mr. Bazemore. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, Causey. Uh, Excuse just want Mr. Bazemore, I do need to ask uh, Ms. Rosenberg if she can do a roll call of uh, board members and staff members that are on this meeting. Thank you, Ms. Causey. Uh, Ms. Rowe? Here. Dr. Hager? Mr. Thomas? Ms. Causey? Here. And given that we do not yet have a quorum of the committee, uh, we can just proceed with receiving information, uh, but we will not be able to uh, take any action in uh, until we have a quorum of the board. And I do know that Mr. Uh, Thomas will be joining us shortly. So with that, if we can uh, also do a roll call of staff that are in this committee meeting. Mr. Thomas. Oh, sorry. Ms. Ba Mr. Baysmore. Uh, present. <laughs> Mr. Corns. Present. Hey, thank you. And now, Mr. Bazemore, if you want to um, provide us with the legislative update. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good to be here this evening. And I just wanted to start off by thanking you. Uh, we had our first meeting actually with May uh, this past Monday, and uh, um, you did a great job of representing us and and uh, uh, working with uh, with with May. Um, they went over just as a quick update. May went over the blueprint. They went, on, went over uh, quite a few bills um, that were uh, statewide that, in, that would impact Baltimore County Public Schools. Uh, Madam Chair, you were, you were engaged and asked a few questions and uh, I just felt like we got off to a really good start. So I just wanted to give that quick, quick update on, on the May uh, legislative session. And so today what we'll, we'll do is just follow up on, on that and talk about some local bills and specific bills that will um, uh, impact us and, and continue that conversation. So thank you for that. That was a good meeting we went to. Very informative, very informative. Thank you, Mr. Raysmore. We are very fortunate to have MABE as a resource and an advocacy um, association, and um, it was definitely a great meeting, so. I agree, I agree, it was amazing. So, okay, very well. So our uh, update on our current bills, I wanted to, highlight House Bill 476 um, is the is the Baltimore County Board of Education member appointments in terms uh, and election of officers. Um, this this bill is currently in the education subcommittee uh, in in ways in ways and means. It's a local bill um, by delegate Eric Eric Ebersole. Um, just to bring uh, folks up on uh, on this bill. Basically, this is a bill that is addressing the um, upcoming uh, election of our uh, seven uh, elected board members and also our four appointed board members. What this bill is attempting to do is to number one, um, 
because our current governor is term limited and cannot run again, he is unable to appoint our four appointed school board members, which means they would have to be appointed these these four appointed board members by the by the incoming governor and that he's not sworn in or she are not sworn in until january the first i believe and so we would have um essentially after the election in november we would have our sitting um board members uh all seven of them who were elected they would be sitting in office functioning doing doing their job and essentially we wouldn't we would not have for, for two months, um, our four um, appointed members. We would also have our, our student member um, um, there. So what this bill attempts to do is say that when the new governor is sworn in and make these appointments, that he will have until February the 1st uh, to make these appointments that is done sooner than later so that these four appointed members can join their colleagues and we have a full functioning board. So that's one thing the the bill is attempting to uh, to address. As Ms. Causey brought up at the school board meeting the other night when we talked about this bill, if if that isn't in the in in this particular legislation, a new incoming governor has a lot on their plate, a lot of appointments, a million things that they're doing. It would be no guarantee that they would make these four appointments um, in that first month. It could be a month or two or or, or, or more. So this bill would say that the incoming governor could make these appointments, these four appointments um, by February the 1st. Um, the other thing this bill is, is, is addressing is that when you do this, the current appointed board members, this bill is saying that they would have to stay on for those two months until the new board members are, uh, are sworn in. And we know that uh, um, if a board member just cannot do that, then they they could uh, they they could resign essentially, and uh, so you would still have um, those members, those appointed members, um, um, who could stay for the two months until the new new board members are sworn in. Uh, but our hope is that all four of them will will do that. The other thing the bill does is stagger the terms of the appointed and elected members so that you wouldn't. Uh, have this situation again where you would have uh, an election and it's a lame duck governor who can't appoint and you would have the same situation play out again. The four uh, appointed members would be elected in the uh, presidential election, would be appointed in the presidential election, and the seven um, elected members would, would continue to be uh, um, elected in the gubernatorial election. And uh, if that's the case, then in 2024, the four appointees that were appointed this year, you know, in, in, in January 2023, they would just serve uh, two years. And they certainly could be reappointed again in 2024 or not. But once you get to 2024, that presidential election, then it'll be on a four year cycle. So I just wanted to bring that up because this this bill was a topic of discussion at our Board of Education and there were some good, good questions brought up uh, by the board members. Hopefully I'll I was able to answer some of them with with this bill moving forward with those amendments. It's called you're muted. Oh, uh, you're muted. Mm. Madam Chair. I'll... Thank you. Okay. Um, did Mr. Thomas join the meeting? I don't see him yet. OK, Ms. Rowe, did you have questions or comments related to um, Mr. Basemore's update? The other thing that came out in the uh, general meeting, which made this somewhat problematic, is that we vote on our operating budget request in February. And if the elected members are not appointed to, are not sworn in until February, that means that basically what we have is a board that's deliberating on the budget that is not the board that will vote on the budget. And I don't find that to be at all helpful. And so I can't support this if the elected members are not going to be sworn in in December with the rest of elected officials, because that means they're being sworn in directly before the operating budget vote. 
And, you know, it's, it's great to not have board turnover, but we could potentially have the entire board turnover in this next time. And we can't have one board deliberating on the budget and then a whole brand new board right before we vote on the budget to vote on the budget. Uh, Madam Chair, may I address that? Yes, and I was just going to say it might be helpful to understand um, as a next point, what would happen if this bill was not passed? What is the time of that? So if you, yes, feel free to respond to Ms. Rowe. Yeah, that's an excellent point actually. Um, uh, Ms. Rowe, I think they, they heard you and, and other folks um, that brought that particular point up. So they amended the bill to say that um, when, when the uh, seven elected members are elected, they are sworn in, I think it's in December, early December, the same time that all the other elected officials are sworn in so that you would have those seven members um, able to vote on the budget or any other matter, um, which, you know, uh, addresses your, your point. The, the original bill had said that everyone would be sworn in at the same time in February when the new members came in, but they, they, they scrapped that part of the bill and, and, and said that the, uh, the elected members would actually uh, be seated and sworn in at the same time as everyone else. So, so one of the things we've seen with this bill, um, is excuse me, Ms. Ms. Rao. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I just wanted to acknowledge that our student member of the board, Mr. Okay. Christian Thomas has joined the meeting. Excellent. Thank you. So, um, and um, so we now have a quorum of of the committee. Uh, proceed, Ms. Rowe. So one of the things we've seen with this bill, um, Mr. Baysmore, is that a lot of people have had conversations with the bill sponsors and you've brought information to the board, but we're not seeing a lot of the information that you brought reflected in the language of the bill. Is that has that been changed yet? Yes, because of the last meeting, there were still some discrepancies between the information and the language of the bill, and I know that they were supposed to update it, and I haven't looked, but I just wanted to know if that's been edited. Mr. Thomas, you're, did you want to address Ms. Rose's question? Yes, I, I would love to. Thank you. Um, so Mr. Mercedes, or sorry, Mr. Bazemore sent an email out to um, Ms. Causey and I, our, our community leadership, um, with the amendment language. So yes, the what Mr. Bazemore had expressed um, as I was joining the call, that is the amendment language, and it received a favorable report from the Baltimore County House delegation. Um, it is now in the in the bill itself. We have the language. It's Pretty much the same thing that I had said at our last board meeting um, when I made the motion to adopt it, except for the, um, you know, the time in which the appointed members come in. You know, they come in on fe by February 1st, the elected members are sworn in, you know, on the exact date. So the language is there and I will forward you the email right now. Um, yes, if you, if you could do that, that'd be great because I have a lot of emails regarding mask mandates and oh, me too. possible that that got lost. Mr. Baysmore, thank you. Mr. Baysmore, if you could um, respond to the question of what would happen, um, what would be the timing of a, appointing the four members to the board if this bill was not approved? Yes, ma'am. And I, and I call this the fix it bill because it's actually, um, well, not, not exactly fixing it, but it's, it's addressing um, a situation where if we did nothing, if we did nothing, and we had the um, uh, election happen, you would seat the four members, then, and if we didn't pass this bill, potentially what could happen is, is that those four um, um, appointed members, they may not be appointed until well into 2023. And so you would literally have a board with seven elected board members, the four appointed members, having not been appointed yet, and uh, that that's a situation that no one would 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 want to be in, uh, and it wouldn't be responsible. Um, with this legislation, it mandates that the governor appoints the four appointed members in January. Um, the other the other thing too is is that um, uh, the elected um, uh, members with the school board member, you would have eight people sitting, and 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 so you could. You could do your business, you could function 
um, until for that month, for that you know, for that month is not a very long time, a month and a half, I believe, until those new members are coming coming on board. Um, it also staggers you you know it also staggers the terms, which is something you want to do because future boards that are coming in. Um, you would be addressing that issue so that they wouldn't have to, you know, deal with this uh, uh, situation ever again. So it kind of cleans it up and puts it back. It's not perfect, but it's it's something that I feel like, you know, everyone feels you really have to do uh, to address this uh, um, appointment uh, process. So I guess I'm still seeking clarification. Um, I understand about the appointments and the potential turnover of the board and the board our Board of Education did vote in December to um, recommend that the appointed term was changed so that it could be staggered in the in the next election in the next cycle. Um, but what wasn't addressed was the timing. Um, and what I'm curious is what is the law currently um, if this didn't pass? What is the law currently about when um, the um, current governor could or could not appoint or when the next gov governor could appoint? The, the current law says that um, a, a term limited governor uh, cannot make um, not just this, uh, these type of appointment, but others uh, if he's not, if that, if he or she is not on the um, primary ballot in the June, in the June primary. So after the June primary, then you can't, you know, the, the sitting governor can't make these, uh, these appointments under, under, under current law. And that's why you want to, that's why you want to stagger them so that moving forward, when that happens again, you won't have, have that, have that situation. Okay, and that is would be the same for a governor that, or this is the one time fix. Yes, so ma'am. It wouldn't happen again. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So you're ah. addressing you, you're definitely addressing that one. Because what I didn't see in the bill is is where that's a one time thing because I think it's. Um, problematic that the entire board doesn't start at the same time because there's training that's done by MABE um, in December for all around the state. Uh, new members are being elected um, in November. Um, and so they do um, training, which we know from our public works uh, consulting report is very important um, for board members to have, and especially new, new board members. Um, and I also um, agree with um, prior comments about voting on the budget, um, being involved in that, but there's also the issue of the chair and the vice chair are elected in December, and it could be a situation where there's the seven members elected, the student member of the board, and they're electing a chair and a vice chair from eight members as opposed to 12. And then there's four new board members that would show up at, in January or February um, that didn't have the opportunity to be considered, that didn't have the opportunity to discuss. Um, so I, 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 I still find that problematic. And would this be this? So this is the only year, but it doesn't. Did I miss where it said that in the thing, Mr. Thomas? Thank you. Uh, so I just put in the chat um, on um, the the first amendment that that Mr. Basemore sent to us. Um, it's House Bill 0476 slash 1439 slash one. Do you have that document up, Ms. Causey? You're muted. I have a lot of tabs open. I'll get there. OK, well, I'll continue as you know. So the last paragraph of that document says Section 2 and be it further enacted that the terms of the appointed members of the Baltimore County Board of Education who are appointed in 2023 shall expire at the end of December 1, December 2020. 
four. So that one is that's basically stating that for this next elect for the next appointment for 2023 for that school year, it the, the term will expire in December of 2024, meaning that the next governor, not within a lame duck year, but then having two years in office at that point, they will then start the schedule of having this every four years from that point going forward, you know, while the governor is still in their term, so appointing that member, not in a gubernatorial election year. So it's it's in the amendment that uh, was presented by Delegate Ebersol at uh, on the 10th of February, or it was created on the 10th of February, but it was presented, I, I believe, last Friday, um, and it, it was adopted into the bill. Thank you for that. Yeah, um, and um, one thing that you did mention, if I can continue, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, certainly. Yeah, you did mention the chair and the vice chair issue, and I, I don't know if um, this bill, I don't think it does, it would, it, it does, Lay out any differences and looking at the amendments now, that would you know the the chair and the vice chair would still be elected in December, um, with those with the presiding board members at the time, um, so that would mean that the appointed members currently and the elected members currently would choose the next student the next would choose the next chair and vice chair of the board of education. So I, I can see that concern on there, but that would only be in effect for that for that first year. Um, moving forward, you know that that that's kind of like the one consequence of this change is that that's that's one one thing that would occur. Um, but you know, I, I personally, I, I'm okay with that because I think that that we're moving into a system where we won't have that issue ever again if it's just for this one year. And also, um, I do think that we could work with Dr. Williams to discuss maybe moving the budget process along just a little bit, maybe moving it back a little bit because. You mentioned that all board members are trained at the same time, but the student member is not trained at the same time as the other members. So there already are some times when other board members aren't trained at the same time, just as when we had our appointment to replace a board member, uh, Roger Hayden's position, that that board member was trained at a different time. So I think the training, again, that would only be a difficulty for this first year, and I, I believe we could possibly maybe move the budget, but I don't know how that might work. Okay, thank you. And I see um, Ms. Rowe, you'd like to make a comment? So part of the reason we deliberate on the budget when we do is because state law mandates when our budget requests have to be submitted to the county. And there's a whole string of events involving making that request request for county and state deadlines. So the only way that we could really move the time frame that we deliberate on the budget would be if the entire county and state budget deliberation process also moved with us because we're aligned with them and state law would have to change to accommodate that, but it would also impact the dates of the county budget accru approval because the school system budget approval is part of the county budget. And so I don't think that that is something that is solely in the power of the school system to decide to do because we have to meet that deadline. And Mr. Thomas, you have a question? Yes, I have a question for uh, Mr. Bazemore. Um, it just, when is the governor appointed in the gubernatorial election? I, I know it's in January, but do you know the exact date? It's it's early January. I don't have the exact date, but it's 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 early January. Okay. Uh, for some Good. reason I have for some reason I have January to first first, but don't don't quote me on that. But okay, it's very early. Very early January. So I, I feel as though, you know, the law says that they would have to be appointed by the end of February, right? But if we have a governor who's in office who, you know, begins their term in early January, they could already have their uh, members they're going to appoint lined up. You know, our nominating commission is going to do the work for them to then choose the appointment. So I don't think it's going to, we're going to have to wait until February 1st. The governor could appoint them on his second day in the term. Um, so I, 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 when we say February 1st, I don't, I don't know if that's, that's not what we're actually, this is the day that we're going to have those new members if this bill passes. But um, additionally, I don't believe, we don't get budget documentation until about mid-January anyway, or like early mid-January. So if anything, it would be like a week or two maybe where the board members, those new appointed members would not, maybe would lose in the budget process. You know, I, I I don't think it's 
too much time loss, especially because you know our, our board members are voting on the budget and not everyone is on the budget committee that votes on the budget. So th those are kind of thinking out loud. Like I think it, it would definitely be like a, a rough first year, but in the long run, like it would just it would make our our, our it would accomplish the goal that we set in our legislative priorities and it would accomplish following the law um, in terms of making sure that you know our governor a governor is is not appointing someone when they're they're not legally allowed to thank you um i guess i wanted to make a comment um it's interesting because of, i've been engaged with this process since 2014 um, when i actually went to annapolis with a wide array of advocates um supporting a, an elected school board a hybrid elected school board and the initial law did have staggering, but then the legislature um, for some reason decided that they in a particular year wanted to make sure all of the appointed members um, did not stay on the board to the length of their previous term as it as it would have been. So I guess my concern is they changed it for some reason and and I had not seen um, you know the the issue raised with the um, term limited governor because uh, so I'm just curious. It sounds like it's an urgent matter to fix something that uh, was not ideal. I'm just have the question of are we going to put another board in a um, awkward uh, position, a difficult position with a number of things that have to get done for what's perceived as a and and I and I can see the the issues with it, um, and and then some other idea happens, and then they, and the legislature wants to change it again. <laughs> um, so that's that's just a, a comment I have. I don't know that it's a question. Um, so I, I'm I'm still uncertain about this. Um, I see uh, in the chat, Miss Rowe, did you? I, I just wanted to say the General Assembly in the time I've been observing has a reputation for one year after the next having different kinds of bills that will impact various things on not just our Board of Education but other local jurisdictions all do the same thing and uh, you know th this is in a one-time thing for this particular thing but I would I would bet money that the outcomes of the next election will generate more bills regarding how our Board of Education is made up, governed, when people are appointed, when they're not appointed. I do think so from a policy standpoint of just good governance and not partisanship, um, having the appointed members appointed in the staggered years is a good idea. But I do remember when that was proposed and they decided not to do it. And it was decided largely not to do it because there were appointed members that members of the General Assembly wanted to get off the board as quickly as possible. So they said, let's appoint all these people now. So, I mean, that that was, we don't like the situation politically, so we're gonna make a law to change it as opposed to we're gonna make a law that actually makes sense for the sake of good governance. So the original idea is the idea that's being proposed now. And I would hope that the General Assembly would stop trying to micromanage the political outcomes on the board and let the elections do that. Ms. Kazi, you're muted. Mr. Thomas, you have a comment and somehow we um, need to move along because we do have a number of other things. So. So, so my question was, uh, Ms. Causey, you said that you were still unsure about this, and I, I'm wondering, should we, do we want to take a vote on this? Because, you know, this would take, what does the board truly want that we move forward to the full Board of Education? Or would it be best if we just bring this forward to the full board with the amendments and discuss it again there? Since it is such a, a large issue, um, we did that with the SMOB bill, you know, or the SMOB idea with, le with the legislative priorities. We just brought it to the full board instead of discussing it and voting on it in committee. Um, I think that it would, given the comments, I think it would make sense to 
um, move it to the full board without a recommendation. Okay. I, that. I move to bring it to the full board without a recommendation. Second row. Any discussion? May I have a roll call vote, Ms. Rosenberg? We're not hearing you, Ms. Rosenberg. Okay, Ms. here. Um, Ms. Rosenberg, we're not hearing you. You're on mute. Um, okay. Maybe there are no objections? Uh, well, we already have a motion on the floor. So I think as the chair of the committee, I will um, do the roll call vote. And uh, Mr. Bazemore, if I will task you for the moment to tally and record. And when Ms. Rosenberg's um, available, you can submit that information to her. OK, yes. Thank you. Uh, so Mr. Thomas. Yes. Ms. Rowe. Yes. And Ms. Causey votes yes. So the motion passes unanimously to forward Bill 476 as amended to the board without a recommendation. And um, Mr. Bazemore, did you want to proceed with the uh, next items? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And our next bill is Senate Bill 55. And, and this bill is sponsored by Senator um, Sidnor. And uh, it basically is is aligning our board of education legal counsel acquiring your legal counsel with all the 20 with the 23 other jurisdictions um essentially the way it is now you 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 have to get baltimore county government's permission or approval to hire your own counsel and what this bill would do would say that uh you would no longer have to do that um that the board itself could you know seek out and hire your own legal counsel? So again, uh, the other 23 jurisdictions in the state uh, function this way. Um, this bill uh, was recently moved out of our uh, Baltimore County uh, Senate delegation, um, so it's mo it's moving forward. And again, it's kind of a fix it bill to get us our board in line with um, you know standard practice around the state. Thank you, and I see. Um Mr. Thomas, you had a comment? Yes, so today I was serving as a page in the Maryland General Assembly, and it was virtual today, um, but I actually got to witness this uh, in second reading on the Senate floor, and I got a favorable report, and now it's on third reading in the Senate floor. Uh, we voted at the last Board of Education meeting to support this bill, so I move to draft a letter to our delegation sharing our support of this bill. Madam Chair, I don't believe we need a, uh, a motion for that. Don't these letters get automatically generated once the board approves? Um, yes, we do have um, Mr. Bazemore and um, staff working on doing those things for us. So yes, because that was a that was at the last full board meeting. Yes, has there been a letter? Oh, sorry. If you has there been a letter sent to the delegation? Um, from well, I'll check with Ms. Hen, the chair of the board. Yeah, I I was in conversation with Ms. Hen and we talked about possibly creating a communication protocol in the legislative committee about making that. I think Ms. Causey, you're aware too. Um, just so I don't know, I thought that could be something. Maybe not. Uh, uh, I'll I'll withdraw my motion then. Okay. OK, that's fine. Well, that's good to hear that um, uh, it moved out of the Senate with a favorable report. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Bazemore, is there a um, House bill version that's been submitted? 
Not not yet, Madam Chair. When it moves through the um, uh, the Senate favorably, then the sponsor, uh, Senator Sidno, will find a co-sponsor on the House side, and hopefully it'll you know continue to move on that side. Sometimes they'll get a, a, a co-sponsor on the other side uh, of the House at, at the beginning, uh, but it's, it's not it's not mandatory. Um, but I think, and, and I spoke to him last week, he, he felt as though he wouldn't have any problems getting a sponsor on the House side. Okay, that's great. Um, any other questions on Senate Bill 55 and its progress moving forward? Okay, hearing none, uh, we can move on to House Bill 347. This is uh, HB 347, Madam Chair, and this bill essentially uh, would have called for the superintendent of, it's a local bill, of Baltimore County Schools uh, to be elected in, a, in an election. Um, we had robust conversations at our last uh, meeting. Um, uh, Ms. Lily Rowe and others weighed in and uh, on this bill. Uh, it was uh, sponsored by Delegate Boatler. Um, I checked this week and it looks like this bill has been withdrawn um, by the sponsor. Okay, thank you for that update. And um, the next one, HB 828. Uh, HB 828, um, again, another local bill uh, for Baltimore County uh, school system. This bill essentially was giving, was saying that the Baltimore County would hire, Baltimore County uh, Board of Education would hire a legal counsel and also a chief budget analyst and that that chief budget analyst would have the power to approve or reject the budget that the, the school board and the superintendent put forth. So this this bill um, um, was withdrawn last week uh, by the sponsor as well. Uh, the 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 information I received on this was that we all you know the board already has legal counsel. You already have a budget committee. And you have, um, you know, analysts uh, at your disposal. So uh, the, um, the sponsor withdrew the bill. OK, thank you. Um, board members, are there any questions or comments about that? If not, we can move on to uh, Senate Bill 414. OK, this is an interesting bill. Uh, this bill, uh, again, is um, sponsored by Senator Sidnor on the Senate side. Uh, it basically is saying that the, the the school board, Baltimore County School Board, as it's constituted now, has 12 members, if you include the, uh, the student. And what they, what the, what the sponsor is saying that all boards need to have odd numbers. In case there's a vote, there will not be a tie. And so the, this bill is essentially saying that they would add a 13th uh, member to the current school board that would be um, appointed and go through the, uh, the the commission, but that the uh, county executive would appoint that 13th member. Uh, the way the the way our system runs now is that the governor appoints our four appointed members. This bill would say we will add one more member giving us 13 and then have the county executive uh, appoint that 13th member. Board members, are there comments or questions regarding this? I have a comment. Ms. Farrell? So one of the things I find problematic about this is that the, the assumption that having an odd number of people would prevent a tie is erroneous because it's not a case of the majority, it's a case of you need seven. And if you add a member, then you need eight. And because members can abstain and not vote at all and are not forced to vote up or down, you could still potentially have a tie vote, but ties are not what moves something forward and having a majority is not what moves something forward. It is a majority of the quorum of all the seats. So the, this adding a person is irrelevant 
And I also find it, as I said before, the General Assembly likes to do things with political motivations. And we do all know that no county executive in Baltimore County can win without winning the Northwest. And it does stand a reason that allowing a county executive to appoint a member of the board, they would get significant political pressure to appoint that member of the board from their political constituency, which is mostly the Northwest. And so this to me just feels like a way to add another member of the board from a specific reason, region to water down the outcomes of elections. And I see Mr. Thomas has a comment. Thank you. Uh, I have to just agree with the sentiment of, of my the former speaker, um, just that because the nominating commission is bringing forward the recommendations for who will serve in that, in that uh, who the county executive would appoint, I don't necessarily know that you know, it would have to be someone from the from from the constituency that was referenced, just because the nominating commission chooses the people who who the county executive could appoint. Also, I do one the one component that I really like about this bill is um, that it would that the chair of the the chair and the vice chair would be elected by a majority vote of the voting members currently serving, um, instead of and instead of just by the voting members in general. I, I do like that uh, that part of the bill, just because I, I think that um, you know. Unlike other decisions made by the board, choosing who the chair and the vice chair of is at the will of the other board members. And so I think that it should just be a majority of the people that are there. Uh, I think of like our recent election where, um, you know, we did, we, there was one less vote that uh, was able to, to go to a, a member um, of both of the candidates for vice chair um, because of we're, we're missing someone from, from, from one of our, our district, one of our elected members. Um, so I just wanted to state that for the record, and um, I think I don't know I, I don't know how I feel about a 13th member being added to the board yet. So I want to continue deliberating on this topic. You know, uh, we already are, we are a pretty large body so far, one of the largest boards in the state of Maryland. I think the second largest board. Um, I'm not that that could be inaccurate. That with Prince George's County having I believe 14 members, and it's kind of claustrophobic in that room when the, there's a lot of people. So no, I'm just kidding. I, I just feel like sometimes I I, I don't know. I, I want us to continue to contact and continue to look at some data, some research to see like, is a larger board more effective or is this, I mean, in Montgomery County, they have eight board members, including the student members. So is a smaller board effective? So I don't know. I was like, we could always remove a board, an, an appointed member or elected member to make it 11 um, instead of, you know, adding one. So I, I just, I want to talk to the sponsor about why we were electing another, why we're adding one instead of removing one. And then also, I just, I also don't know the difference, like, between the county executive and the governor appointing, you know, since we already have the nominating commission, who appoints, I feel like doesn't really matter. Because I've spoken to one of our one of our our, our members um, who well, who's appointed, who's told me that during her nominating commission or their during their nominating commission, uh, uh, I think they they spoke outwardly against the governor that was seated at the time. So you know, it, oh, and, and spoke against that interest. So I, I don't, I don't necessarily know that whoever's appointing really matters because at the end of the day, we have our nominating commission to make sure that our stakeholders are the ones who are choosing who the appointed members are. So okay. I just wanted to share that, um, and I, I, I'm, I'm finished speaking now. Thank you, Ms. Kazi. So you're muted. Yes, Ms. Rowe. Oh. I, I think it's also important to note that the county executive appoints the chair of the nominating commission. So, um, I mean, I agree that if we were going to have hypothetically a county executive appoint a member to the board of education, which I don't think we should, but if we were going to, it would make more sense to take one of the current appointed members and adjust it that way. Or, or here's an idea. Let's remove all the appointed members and just have an elected board. I think that would make things far more democratic and then the board would actually reflect the will of the people. So I wanted to make a comment. Um, I've, I've been appointed, 2015 I was appointed, um, and then in 2018 I ran for election and was elected to retain my seat. So I, um, and I've been to a lot of professional development, both at the, um, state level and at the national level. And um, one of the um, takeaways that I got from that is that um, the middle-sized boards tend to be um, 
more manageable. Let's put it that way. And um, that it is difficult as the board uh, gets larger and larger. Um, and then for some small districts, um, you know, it um, can be problematic to have a very small board. Um, I also find it problematic in this bill at this time that they would alter the quorum requirement for electing the chair and the vice chair when no one knows how many members are going to be there based on whether another bill passes. So um, that could be really problematic if it alters the requirements for the election of the chair and the vice chair when there may only be eight members um, and four members join after that. Um, so that, that that's a concern. Um, so I I don't agree with this bill as it as it stands. Um, as was pointed out, the county executive um, appoints, I believe it's five members to the nominating commission as well as the chair. So there is input from uh, the county elected official. Um, and then there is also input from the um, elected governor who um, appoints a certain number of committee members to the nominating commission. But honestly, I, I, if we wanted to, if we wanted to change the number to have odd, I would go down one. Um, but also, as, as was pointed out earlier, you can have 11 members and the vote could be four to four with three abstaining or, you know, five to five with one abstaining. So I don't think the odd number versus the even number is, um, makes a difference. The difference is with the information presented, can board members um, come to consensus and, and make a decision? So, um, so we don't, uh, we also had, um, we're gonna open it up to other um, bills or any other update that Mr. Bazemore want. Is there, any um, action that a board member wants to consider on this or Mr. Thomas, I see you had a question. Yeah, I did have a question. I was wondering how many of the members of the nominating commission are appointed by the governor and how many are appointed by the county executive? Well, Madam Chair, I don't have the complete, uh, may I speak Madam Chair, I'm sorry. You're muted, Ms. Causey, but I think you said yes. Okay. Um, and I, I don't have the full answer, Christian, but just based on my recollection um, following the nominating commission, I think, um, and I know you're right um, when Lily said that one, the, the chair is appointed by the county executive. Um, they have stakeholder, and it's about 19 members on this commission, I think, 18 or 19. I think like seven of the positions or stakeholders like TABCO and 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 um, you know other groups like that will send their you know their representative and then the governor I think appoints I don't know the exact number but it's a it's a good many uh, because this was state legislation that that enabled this and so the governor uh, appoints quite a few um, they have like seven stakeholder groups and then the um, you know I think the county and I think the county executive Appoints the one. Okay. I also just looked it up right now and I see some. I'm just looking at it right now. Governor's appointment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight governor's appointment. Yep. Okay. And then I like seven I don't know stakeholders. Yeah, I don't yeah, yeah, something like that. But I don't know. I don't see any that say directly appointed by the county executive. But I feel like okay. you know, I think he may appoint the the chair. I mean, he chair. may not appoint to the commission, but appoint appoints the chair. Yeah, I think it's just the chair as well because everyone else looks like that. So I think that, you know, the chair is just someone who facilitates the conversation. So the, I think the argument saying that the, the county executive has the power because they appoint the chair, I don't necessarily know that that's, I don't necessarily know that I agree with that. But if the governor can appoint eight people to the nominating commission for their selection, I mean, I didn't, I have a problem with that because like, you know, that's giving the power to the governor to choose who the nominating commission members who's who's going to be brought forward to him 
or her or or them. So I, I just feel like that is is more of an issue to me than having them what, what this bill would call for, which is adding another member appointed by the county executive. Um, you know, so I I just I would say that that I. I still don't know whether or not I support the county. Like, you know, I still don't know where, where, where I lie with that, but I just feel like that's a, a bigger concern to me than having the county executive being able to, to appoint someone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas, and thank you for uh, the clarification. I pulled up the same document and I um, put the link in the chat. It is available on uh, the bcps.org website under Leadership Board of Education and then there is the BCSB nominating commission page uh, that has the current makeup of the board. It also has um, a process fact sheet, a member duties fact sheet, and uh, the commission's bylaws. So for any of the public that would want to refer to that document, it is there. Um, so thank you for that clarification. Um, is there um, any other questions or comments? Mr. Thomas. Yes, uh, I just wanted to say, so are, are we then, I mean, I, I'm not comfortable making a motion on whether or not I, I support this or not yet. I do want to do a little more research. Um, so I don't know if this wants to go to the full board or if we just kind of want to not take a position on this. I'd like to not take a position on it because if it were up to me, we wouldn't have any appointed members. Okay. Okay, so. Um, Mr. Bazemore, what is the the next um, the next activity that's related to this bill SB four one four? If it if, if and when it makes it through the Senate side, if it makes it, it may not. It may not. Then it would um, then go over to the um, House side. And uh, if you if you wanted to uh, weigh in on that side of the okay, so it's. Uh, uh, we, I see Mr. Thomas has put in the chat, it's on the third reading in the Senate. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I don't support it. Um, I do think, um, I think it's, I think it would, be helpful to bring it out to the full board with no recommendation so that there's an opportunity for um, because we're three members out of 12 um, to provide an opportunity for for input. Um, so I will make a motion to move Senate Bill 0414 to the full board without a recommendation. Is there a second? Uh, I'll second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? OK, it is. I'm sorry. The only comment I have is that. I would do I would like to caution against moving everything to the full board without a recommendation, because I believe the board expects us to sort of vet this and I, I don't want to move every single bill that we consider to the full board because that's going to make our full board meetings very long and defeat the point of having a committee. Um, and we've gotten no feedback from board members, other board members, that they actually want to deliberate on this. Um, thank you. That's good feedback. I mean, I guess since we've had some conversation, um, significant conversation we could at least document what what the current feedback is from the committee i mean i can amend it i would amend my motion to um bring it forward to the full board um with an unfavorable report <laughs> to just strike my other motion and use that language and then someone would have to second if they wanted to process that amendment. Well, that suggests that we're recommending that the full board take a position unfavorably. I'd like to suggest that we do nothing and not take a position at all. 
and therefore not move it to the full board. Okay, um, then I think if we, Ms. Causey, may I? Uh, yes, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. I, well, I think if we process this motion, this this motion that's on the floor right now, then um, if if the motion fails, then we would take then we would satisfy Ms. Rowe's desire, which is to not take a position on this bill and just continue. Consent was made and seconded. I believe that's correct. That is another way to process it. So since my amendment, my motion to amend was not approved or was not seconded, I will withdraw my motion to amend and we can take a vote on the motion on the floor. So Ms. Rosenberg, the motion on the, Mr. Thomas? I was wondering, yes, can you please read the motion again? Certainly. The motion on the floor is to move Senate Bill 0414 to the full board without a recommendation. Ms. Rosenberg, can you take a roll call vote, please? Sure. Mr. Thomas? No. Ms. Rowe? No. Ms. Causey? No. Okay, motion fails. Fails. Thank you. Um, okay, and Mr. Thomas, with uh, anything that's occurred uh, since this agenda was processed, uh, are there other significant updates that you would like to give us? And then um, I will then open the floor if there are other um, issues that the committee would like to discuss since things change in Annapolis every day. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So I just I wanted to talk about, oh. I was okay. just wondering if Mr. Bazemore had anything. Oh, Mr. Bazemore, sorry. I think it's Mr. Thomas. Yeah. Sorry. No, man, I think I think we covered what we uh, needed to cover today, uh, uh, Madam Chair. So if there's anything that the, uh, the board members wanted to um, talk about or any bills that they were inter interested in we could we could talk about those okay um and mr thomas is that something you wanted to do at this time yes i just wanted to share an update about house bill 192 the student member of the board voting uh, rights bill um it did receive a favorable report from the baltimore county house delegation it's moving through the house it's still in the ways and means committee right now um so i just wanted to share that with you all and also there's another bill house bill 797 i believe um, i don't know if it's the correct number um that would uh, it's introduced by our, our the House of Delegates Majority Leader, um, Delegate Ludke, and it would expand the SMOBS voting rights for every LEA across the state of Maryland um, to full voting rights with the exception of um, the uh, Certificated Employee Disciplinary Action. And that had a committee hearing today. I believe there were eight testimonies in support and like one against. Um, and that was in the House Ways and Means Committee. So there's some updates about SMOB legislation. I just wanted to share with you because both of those would affect Baltimore County. Um, and yeah, thank you. So can you tell us the um, bill number for Delegate Ludke? Yes, let me just, I just want to verify real quick. Look at my. 797, I believe. Yep, 797, yep. And that's the one for the full state or just Baltimore County? That's for the full state, yes. Full state. Mm -hmm. OK. And I can um, a personal point of privilege. Yes. Thank you. I just wanted to share that. Um, I was unable to testify for that bill, but I really wanted to. I missed the deadline um, and I'm excited. There were a lot of smobs testifying there. It was really great. So for the record, um, student around the world from Baltimore County is in full support of House Bill 797. And in support of House Bill 192. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Rowe, did you have any comments on this? I just wanted to make a point. I believe Mabe does not support this bill. Is that correct, Mr. Baysmore? Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, Mabe uh, was the um, one opposed to the bill and, and, and uh, I believe testified, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and what was their reasoning? Well, they uh, local local uh, local uh, uh, autonomy, basically, that they um, always defer to the local school system to uh, 
you know, weigh in on these issues themselves. So, so they think each jurisdiction should make their own decision. Yeah, I don't. I don't have the actual testimony here, but uh, I think that's 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 basically what it was, among some other things. I could get it and send it to you. I could get their testimony and send it to you. No, I know where to find it if I want to watch it. Thank you. Um, and Ms. Rowe, were there any other items that you wanted to bring up? Um, Mr. Bainsmore, can you update us? I'm not sure of the bill number, but there is a bill about requiring schools to have um, albuterol inhalers on hand all the time for emergency use. Are you familiar with that bill? Yeah, uh, they had a hearing on that the other the other day. I uh, forget the number of that bill, but I believe um, that's still still in committee. I don't know if it was voted out of the uh, uh, Ways and Means Committee, but once I get the bill number, I could I could look that up and get that to 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 the board members. I think it's interesting that the nursing association changed their position and now supports doing this, and. I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to have every nurse's office to have an inhaler for a child who's in distress. And I, I would like for us to be able to deliberate on this in time to see if the board would take a position on it. Yeah, and I, and I think, um, Lily, what the, if I remember correctly for that particular bill, I, I don't think it was, um, I, th I think the question was who has the um, ability or expertise to, to deliver this in the system. We know that nurses do, that they can, uh, you know, provide this treatment, but I think there was uh, questions about training specific personnel to do it. Um, and I think that, I think it was moving forward as well. But again, once I, once I get the, um, the, the, um, the bill number, I can, I can email everyone the, uh, you know, where it is. Sure, Madam Chair, can we put that bill on the next agenda? The agenda for the next committee meeting? Yeah. Um, well, that's uh, one of my points of discussion is the um, under announcements number four with the timing of the next meeting. Because the next meeting of our committee is scheduled to be April 17th, but uh, signy die is April 11th. So well, maybe we should reschedule our meeting. That was going to be the conversation when we get to that agenda item. So. Um, so we, we can address that there. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. And then, um, is there any other one? Mr. Thomas? I think I just wanted to share that um, when I was, uh, uh, I can't remember the, the bill number thought my head. There's a bill that's being introduced by uh, Senator Washington and Delegate um, ever saw that would codify in law that students have the right to public to demonstrate publicly um, in school buildings, giving a 48 hour notice to their administrators. Um, I testified in support of that as an independent uh, student uh, last a few weeks ago. And I also wanted to share that. Um, let's see. I, I've heard so there at House Bill 226 and Senate Bill 577 on um, the bill about self-contained special education classrooms use of video recording devices. Um, that bill, to my knowledge, will be getting an amendment soon. Um, uh, request by the request of uh, I don't know if it was Senate or House leadership um, to create like a pilot year um, or a pilot kind of start off to see if 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 special education cameras and classrooms um, would actually be beneficial to students and to teachers um, in, in those topics. So uh, I, I wanted us to discuss that, but I know that we wouldn't have a quorum to discuss that considering um, a, some board members might want to recruit themselves. Um, but I, with this new information about an amendment coming forward, I, I want to learn more about the amendment before that. Thank you. So thank you for that, Mr. Thomas. Um, that was dis discussed, I believe, at the Legislative Committee. Um, and I know I've heard from community members there um, is a lot of interest in that. Um, so I'm wondering if we can, um, I'll just work with the chair of the board 
if we don't want to take here on it because we don't have the quorum necessary to vote on that bill, then I will work with the chair, uh, chair on adding that to the agenda. If there are no objections. OK, hearing none. Um, I had one bill to consider Ms. Um, Hen or Mr. Thomas, if you don't have any additional ones. Um, so I was interested in the status of House Bill 793, which is, um, let's see, it's uh, a local board governance and it relates to, let me see the title, um, County Boards of Education Community Ombudsman to establish a position of a community on ombudsman. Um, and th this board did vote during the operating budget cycle to request uh, funding for a community um, for ombudsman uh, that reports directly to the board, which is really it, the actual language was to reinstate a position that had been removed. Um, but that I believe it was previous to 2013 um, that there had been a community ombudsman and the board had discussion around um, the board's policies where we support community engagement, uh, but that we know that we have a staffing issue because we only have one staff that uh, supports the work of the Board of Education. Um, and that there's a lot of input and we really could benefit from having one staff person that's really focused on um, getting it all together, working on individual issues, and then uh, bringing information to the board. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to understand if there was um, a status on that. And I was looking up the MABE thing, but they have no position They have no position on it. So I don't know, Mr. Bazemore, if you had heard anything about that bill. I have. I would have to look that one up, Madam Chair, and find out where it is um, in, in, the, in the process and get back to you. Okay. That's HB, HB 797. 793. 793, OK. Board members, any any more questions or comments? I would just like to say I would, you know, I mean, the, the details matter, but I would yeah. fully support a state law that would require every school system to have an ombudsman. It makes no sense that other government agencies have to and we don't. And we were the first ones to do it. A whole bunch of other school systems followed suit voluntarily and then we decided not to for some reason, which it just makes no sense. And um, when we say we that that was. Um, I'm not <clears throat> the Board of Education votes on the budget, um, but I don't know the time frame. It was before our time, I believe. Um, OK. All right, so we'll um, get the detail. We'll send that out to the full committee. Um, is there any other updates or requests for information? OK, hearing none, we will move to our next item on the agenda, which is number four announcements. Uh, so it says Mr. Thomas, if, <laughs> but uh, if it's OK with you, I'll just uh, go ahead. The, the next thing on the announcements is that the next um, committee legislative and government relations committee meeting will be Thursday, April 17th at four o'clock. But um, April 11th is when the um, legislative session ends um, and things move rapidly as that date approaches. Um, so if the committee, uh, if there's no objections, I would like to work with um, Mr. Thomas as the vice chair and um, Mr. Baysmore and Ms. Rosenberg um, on finding a date sooner. So if there's no objections, I would like to do that. OK, hearing no objections, uh, we'll follow up on that. And then Ms. Rowe, you had said you wanted to um, suggest an item on the next committee meeting. 
Yes, the bill regarding emergency inhalers in schools, which Mr. Baysmore will find the number for. Okay. 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 Um, is there any further uh, business or questions before we adjourn our meeting? Okay, I appreciate um, everyone's input. Um, there's a lot that's going on in legislative session and certainly we are always trying to um, understand how we can improve things for our students and um, what goes along with that is understanding how we can improve things for our staff and also for governance um, by the Board of Education. So thank you all for your input and um, there will be an announcement posted about when the next meeting is. Thank you and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Excellent job. Excellent. Thanks, everybody.